And we have one final guest before I give you a quick legislative update and my spiel. Oh, oh, oh this is right. This is right. Here, you come. Commissioner U. Daly. Portland Commissioner U. Daly. Damn, that's perfect. Hi, everybody. Uh, before I get started on my official remarks, um, I'm not high, by the way, I'm just exhausted at the end of a very long uh, work week. Um, as some of you know, I owned a bookstore for 22 years called Reading Frenzy. I'm a little bit of a word geek, and I learned a new word today, tonight, right here, cheachable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what it means, but I can't imagine. Um, secondly, I want to say we're talking about normalization tonight. Look around. Cannabis users look pretty normal to me. They look like you. They look like me. Uh, and finally, I want to say I feel like I'm preaching to the choir with these remarks tonight, but I think it's important that you hear these words come out of the mouth of your elected representative, that you know you have a champion at City Hall. And we also have media here tonight. So our messages are going to be shared beyond this uh, room. So please bear with me. All right. As the commissioner in charge of the Office of Community and Civic Life, it's my honor and duty to oversee the city of Portland's cannabis program. Um, I'm also a longtime advocate for cannabis legalization and common sense drug policy reform, but we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> I'm really proud of the work that we've done in the office, uh, not only to improve our services to the industry, but towards restorative justice with the recent creation of our social equity program. This program, in case you haven't heard, lowers barriers to entry for small businesses and provides extra support to businesses whose owners or staff were affected by cannabis prohibition, aka, AKA our failed war on drugs. It prioritizes support for businesses with, who work with vendors on Oregon's minority, women-owned, and emerging small business lists. I'm also really pleased to say we just dedicated a couple hundred thousand dollars from our cannabis tax revenue to record expungement. I want to see that happen at the state. <laughs> cannabis is prohibited at the state level. Uh, tens of thousands of people's lives Livelihood, families were torn apart by these laws. We say it's legal now. Why should anyone have to pay uh, to remove uh, convictions that would no longer be convictions today? Uh, we're also really committed to creating opportunities for minority business owners. But tonight, we are here to talk about social consumption. I know there's a lot more we need to do. It's the city's responsibility to ensure that benefits of the cannabis industry are extended to everyone who wants to participate uh, and that our policies are equitable. And we need to specifically extend these benefits to communities of color who we know have been disproportionately impacted by cannabis prohibition. It's with this responsibility in mind that Portland as a city and Oregon as a state must move and must move swiftly to create a legal framework for the social consumption of cannabis. Yes. I told you it's a little bit dry. I'm going to try to lighten it up. Uh, there are very few options, as you all know, for consumers to enjoy legally purchased cannabis outside of an owner-occupied home. It cannot be consumed, consumed in a public area, and there is no statewide regulation telling consumers where they can imbibe in a legal and safe place. As many of you know, I decided to seek elected office because I care about tenants' rights, and there's a clear discrepancy in our policy impact on homeowners versus Portlanders who live in rented homes, and residents with restrictions on smoking or vaporizing, or who receive federal assistance, as we just heard from Jeremy? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's a really, really important issue. I also have, I have a son with a disability, he has seizures and a uh, high tone that causes spasming, and I'm very much looking forward to him uh, being able to also legally, safely uh, use this. Sweetie for the win. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> so we've seen a cottage industry of private, private clubs with little regulation providing spaces for consumers to smoke or vaporize cannabis. 
We have seen temp temporary events with cannabis consumption in Portland, many that employ a wide and variable range of protocols and practices. The time has come to move beyond this confusing piecemeal approach. We need to prioritize working with state legislators, public health professionals, the cannabis business. They're, they're trying to make me say cannabis business. I, I really, <laughs> do you guys like that term? You do? I'm getting mixed. Okay, I'm gonna stick with the cannabis business. Uh, community and other stakeholders to develop a thoughtful, informed path for social consumption. There are many reasons why it's vital for the future of cannabis to support social consumption, and I'm gonna share a few of them with you tonight. First and most important, important is racial and class equity. I feel like I'm getting a lot of feedback. Um, as I mentioned, renters uh, are significantly less likely to be able to consume at home. Decades, uh, and renters are also more likely to be low income and more likely to be people of color. So those are multiple ways that this policy is inequitable. Decades of data shows that communities of color have been disproportionately impacted by our drug laws, including being cited for c consuming cannabis in public. Cannabis consumption in Oregon there, uh, is now legal, therefore everyone should have a legal place to enjoy it. Second is safe consumption. For those new to cannabis, learning how to consume safely and responsibly can be a challenge. Thinking about this today reminded me of learning how to ski. I spent a couple years as a teenager on the slopes at Mount Hood. And I took to it pretty quickly. I was pretty good at skiing, but I didn't know how to stop. And why didn't I know how to stop? Because my 14-year-old peers taught me how to ski. Uh, we should not be relying on youth or the otherwise uninitiated to teach about safe, responsible uh, cannabis consumption. So uh, I'm looking forward to <coughs> improving that uh, situation as well. A third factor is super boring but important to business owners, regulatory consistency. Rather than the existing patchwork of state and local regulations, a comprehensive, sensible framework for social consumption will facilitate public education and promote safe usage. A reliable social consumption framework will be easier to understand, follow, and enforce. Social consumption also offers a huge potential for growth in the cannabis business sector. Oregon's craft beer and wine industry, which I personally treasure, as I'm sure many of you do as well, has greatly benefited from the ability to provide samples to consumers. And I was also thinking about this in relative to my own life, having been a bookstore owner, trying to imagine running a bookstore where every book and magazine and comic was sealed in plastic and none of my customers could see inside to sample uh, the wares. I don't think I would have stayed in business very long. Uh, you guys have a slightly better odds, I think, than I would have but still, it's really vital to our, our businesses. Sampling goods allows businesses to showcase their project, products and share them with adult consumers. The cannabis industry should have the ability to do this as well. Yes. I'm almost done, folks, just bear with me. Social consumption would undoubtedly increase revenue from cannabis tourism, yes. providing benefits to other industries like hotels, restaurants, and small businesses of Portland. And if you track a uh, city council, which I'm sure all of you do religiously on a weekly basis, we just devoted $5 million from our visitors fund, which is money that we get from tourism, to supportive housing for people who are chronically homeless and experiencing um, mental health challenges as well as addictions. So, it's not just about businesses making more money, it's about our whole community being uh, more prosperous and healthier and having more money to provide the vital services that we need to provide. It, it just doesn't make sense that when adults visit Oregon from out of state, they can legally purchase cannabis, but they have nowhere to legally consume it. And they also can't take it across state lines, so yeah. Uh, the adoption of a social consumption policy will reduce public use. This is a complaint we hear. I think it's a legitimate complaint. I don't want to hang out somewhere where people are smoking cigarettes. Some people don't want to hang out where people are smoking marijuana. That's, that's fair. 
even though cannabis is legal, not everyone, uh, I'm just going to be a little redundant now, not every court leader wants to smell or see cannabis consumption in their daily lives. And I respect that choice. I want to encourage private consumption. When we provide places for adults to enjoy this product, we will reduce cannabis exposure to youth in our community. For parents, it can be difficult to use cannabis at home, which someone mentioned earlier, um, and out of view of children. With regulated lo locations, we can support responsible cannabis usage away from those under the age of 21. Finally, we have an amazing opportunity to create an intelligent social consumption model with a strong fo focus on equity that will help other localities develop their own cannabis regulations. And if there's anything I love more than just doing right by the people of Portland, it's doing things first and or better than everywhere else in the country. So please help me help each other uh, craft this policy and let's get this, let's get this done. Thank you. Legislative Director Sam Chapman for your leadership on this issue. To the city's cannabis program coordinator Brandon Goldner, Goldner and my policy advisor Wente Johannes. They're not here tonight, but they are really on your side for all the work they've done around social equity and sensible cannabis regulation. And that is all. Thanks, everybody. Happy holidays. We're almost ready for music. Let me just.